All right. I think we're working. Let's see here. Let me see. Yeah, I think we're. I think we should be live right now. I am Drew Badger, the founder of EnglishAnyone.com and the English Fluency Guide. And today we're going to talk about uh, how to use very like a native English speaker. All right, this should be an interesting video. It uh, it should be actually pretty quick as well uh, because there's not a whole lot to talk about other than uh, clearing up a little bit of confusion that uh, like, all right, looks like chat is working on my phone as well too, which is awesome. All right, so I wanted to make this video for two reasons. Uh, the first one is that I was asked uh, actually by a couple of people about this question uh, about very, uh, and also because I see videos on YouTube that tell people not to use the word for some reason, like it's not interesting enough or something like that. I use very all the time. <laughs> so uh, whenever you see videos that are like, don't use this word or something, like it's just marketing. It's just trying to scare you into watching a video uh, when obviously natives use it all the time. Now there certainly is more, you know, I guess interesting vocabulary you can use, but a lot of people who are still trying to learn English don't even feel comfortable with very. So why are you trying to learn you know, lots of like difficult stuff, all right? So master the basics first, uh, but then, you know, get, uh, get something a bit more interesting when you feel uh, a lot more excited about it, all right? But this video should be interesting for you uh, because we're going to talk about some uses of very that you have probably not heard before, or if you have, you're probably not using them in your conversations, all right? So nice to see everybody there. Looks like chat is working, nice, uh, and I don't have to worry about checking on the phone. Good, uh, good morning. Yes, always interesting to meet. Glad to hear it. All right, nice to see Tom, Tomoko, and everyone else here. Let's get into it. Uh, I want to be pretty quick with this. Again, it's not that long, but then we'll go and answer questions after that if people have any. All right, uh, so there are basically three things we're going to talk about in this video. Uh, the first is just using very, uh, like the typical way that people can use it and there's nothing wrong with that. Don't feel bad about saying very, like it's very hot or whatever. It's just fine. You don't have to feel bad about doing that. Remember that most people are just using basic, uh, like basic words in, in conversations and they, they're able to communicate fluency, uh, fluently. So focus on fluency rather than just trying to repeat things or try to learn things that are really difficult just to be impressive in a conversation. What's really impressive is actually carrying a conversation itself. Uh, and you'll notice even in these lessons, I'm not using a lot of difficult language, but I am able to communicate fluently. I don't have like a plan in my mind and know exactly what I'm going to say, but I can still express myself. All right, uh, so basically, Again, it should be pretty quick. Uh, make sure this fits on here. So number one, uh, we've got just the regular use of very where we're talking about like an extreme version of something. So if we've got, we're gonna measure something like, like here's like how hot something is. Like this is pretty hot. Like let's say it's 100 degrees or something. Uh, but whew, this is very hot at like 200 degrees. So we couldn't walk around outside because it's too hot over here, all right? This is the use of very that you're probably familiar with. Uh, but the other two uses of very that you'll see uh, occasionally, especially if you spend time with native speakers, is when we want to emphasize something and we want to be like very precise about it, all right? So this is, uh, do you, maybe I should give just a few more examples of this, but this is like we're just going to modify an adverb, uh, like modify uh, like an adjective like this, like it's very hot, very cold, very fun, very interesting, very something like that, all right? It's pretty, pretty common, pretty easy. Uh, and again, there's nothing wrong with using that in your conversations. Don't feel nervous or bad about that. All right, but the second one, this is a little bit more interesting. Let me give you an example. Uh, so let's say I have like, a, I don't know, like a shelf uh, and there's like a bunch of uh, things up here. So I have a shelf, I don't know, let's say these are just toys. I'm drawing little circles here just because that's fastest. Uh, but I say, uh, can you give me the one on the top? So the top one, give me like the top one. So the top, top one. Right, with a more, a more precise marker. So the top one. 
All right, so give me give me like the top one. And I might reach up and like, it's not, it's not very clear exactly. Like we got this one here and this one and this one. It's like, eh, sometimes people are not precise uh, with their language. So I might say, no, 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 give me like the very top one. Give me the very top one. So it's like, okay, this one is like here. Okay, this one, it looks like the highest one. I'll give you that one. Give me the very top one, all right? So like this one is the top and it's also the very top, but conversationally, casually, natives will describe this. They're just being very precise by using the word very. So it's a very simple way to do this, all right? So I can talk about like the very top of something. Uh, let's say I've got like a, you know, a bunch of people in line over here, same kind of idea. So these are all people I'm not going to draw all of them here, but you have a line of people standing here. So this is the first person. This is the last person. Uh, and I say, yeah, uh, tell the last person uh, to come here. Tell the last person to come here. And yes, like this is the last person, but it's also the very last person. Again, just being very precise, conversational. We're just saying like very, we're using very in that way. Uh, of being like really precise, okay? Another example, let's say we have, uh, I'll erase this over here. So if I'm going to, let's say I have a string or something between two points, all right? The marker pen doesn't supply enough ink, says John. Yes, like some of it, like, it's a, it's a pretty good marker still, but this one is a little bit, uh, yeah, I guess, it's a finer point. So that blue one is a thicker point. This is a finer one. Uh, so let's say we have a distance between two things and I say, put it in the middle. So I have maybe a ball or something and I say, put it in the middle. Now the middle, it could be like here or it could be like here or here. Maybe we don't need to be very precise very precise okay maybe we don't it doesn't matter like i'm just i tell my friend hey put the ball down in the middle of the floor so put the ball down put the ball down in the middle of the floor make sure we can read that yep so put the ball down in the middle of the floor and that's like, in a, in a general way, people aren't being very specific or so precise about their language. It's just, yeah, put the ball down in the middle of the floor. So the middle could really be like a range of, of different places, all right? But when we do want to be specific, ooh, look, like, boom, right here, the very middle. This is the very middle. So the very middle of the floor. Lillian, nice to see you then. All right, so flower looks like, what did, you, what did you say, Tom? Flower, ah, floor, yes. Well, floor is a different word like flower. If we wanna use the word flower, F-L-O-W-E-R, this is like, you know, like a flower, a flower outside. F-L-O-U-R, this is like baking, baking flour, you know, for like making bread or whatever, that's flour. Uh, but then we've got floor, floor. So these two have the same sound. This one does not. It's a different sound. If you'd like to learn how to say all those, you can find them in Frederick. Click on the link in the description below to get that and learn how to pronounce all of these different and related words. All right. Is everybody getting this, though? So I might have the very start, the very middle. The very top, the very bottom, the very, all right? So anything like that where we really want to be precise. Okay, everybody getting this? So it's, a, it's, it's like the same idea if we talk about something being very hot, it's still not, it's really not like exact. It's just, it's just saying it's like extreme or further than something else. But it's not really talking about something being precise or being exact with it. But that's what we mean with very. Okay, so if you can think of any other examples, you can put them in the chat here. Let's see if we got some more. Um, let's say we're going to read something just to give you another example. I'll write a few of these down here. Let me use the, uh, my trusty blue marker over here. So 
So just to put, let's see if I can raise these up. I know people complain about my writing, so I will make this a little bit neater. So let's put this over here. We'll put the word very. And then we've got, let's see, one, two, and then three over here. Should be coming, coming in. Let's see. So we've got very, so all these mean uh, or different uses of the word very. Uh, so the first one, as we covered before, we've got things like very hot or very cold or very slow or very fast, something like that. So we're just talking about like a, uh, like an extension of something. So a little bit faster, a little bit uh, like longer or whatever, something like that. All right, yes. So you can also add, just as Tomoko has written here, like very, 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 very like that. All right, there's nothing wrong with using that in a conversation, especially if you're just speaking casually and conversationally. All right, so the second example of very, this is where we're being precise about something. So we have the, and it's important here, the, because we're looking at like one specific thing. It's not like a uh, something, it's the. We're looking at one specific thing, the, very, and then we could have middle, or the very end, or the very start, or the very top, like that. All right, now maybe this marker is even worse for writing. <laughs> All right, Lillian, again, very clear explanation. So that would be under this over here, very clear. All right, so not just clear, but like very clear. All right, so again, we've covered both of these so far. And then the third one, this is even more interesting, but hopefully this makes sense. All right, but listen, everybody have, everybody getting this so far? Let me check chat, make sure we're working here. Let's see, Antonio says, or Anom, Anomi, Ano, no. That's such like a hard word for me to say. <laughs> Let's see, anonimo, anonimo, okay. See, once you practice the pronunciation, like anonimo, okay. All right, let's see, is there any trick to master? TH sounds like the, the, though, that, 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 that. Yes, you get Frederick. It teaches you how to pronounce all of those words. Just click on the link in the description below this video. So if you want to learn pronunciation and understand how words are connected, how their pronunciations are different, all those things, just get Frederick. I walk you through that whole process and you can teach yourself pronunciation very quickly. It will improve your listening, your vocabulary, everything. All right, let's see. And Alejandro says, speaking of bottom, the phrase rock bottom is quite interesting. Could you please give some examples? All right, that's kind of related to this, but uh, let's talk about that anyway. That's a good question. Uh, so let's say we are digging in the dirt. Uh, I'll erase three for now. We'll come, we'll come back to that. So people might typically be digging in some dirt. So here is uh, like a guy up here and he's got a shovel. Let's imagine this is a guy with a shovel. <laughs> and so he starts digging and what you find in, in the dirt, we've got different layers. So different layers of, you know, like this is just kind of soil up here. You might have a little like few rocks in there and some worms and other things like that. So this is soil. And as we get deeper down, we keep digging. We might have other layers and then we hit something hard. This is we hit the rock down here. All right, so we're working down to the rock. Do, 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 do. The guy keeps digging down, down. Oop, doof. And now we can't dig anymore because we hit rock bottom. All right, so this is like the very, like the deepest point where we, I mean, we could technically dig into it, but if we're just a guy with a shovel and we're just digging down into something like this, this is where we can't dig any further. So we keep digging over here, we get down. That's rock bottom. So it's like the furthest you can go. And then, so this is the physical idea where we might use something like this. Uh, same idea with kind of uh, like the ocean. So if we're in water, so we might have a boat uh, up in water the same way. Here's a boat. So you have water here. You have a layer of water and then a layer of, you know, the same kind of stuff like some dirt or some soil or whatever. And then you've got the rock below that. So if you hit rock bottom, that means you can't go any further. Now we can take this idea and use it figuratively to mean like we can talk about someone being very depressed, like they're really uh, like, oh my goodness, I don't know, I, I, can't, I can't be more depressed. Okay, 
all right? So I might have like, uh, like a company is like really going very bad, like it's losing all of its money and like it hits rock bottom, all right? Like the stock price of a company goes to zero, that's a rock bottom. You can't go any further than that, all right? Hopefully that makes sense. So we might call this the very bottom. So again, when people are speaking, usually people are not very precise with their language. So if you listen to people like a native English speaker might say like, oh, it's 150 degrees in here. All right, thanks, says Alejandro, you're, you're welcome. So it's 150 degrees in here. Really, is it really 150 degrees in this room? Probably not, but people, that's how people speak. We exaggerate or we generalize or we talk about things in an imprecise way, imprecise. But if we're trying to be precise, like maybe it's a, a medical thing or you know something like that. Yeah, he, does, he does look a little bit scary, huh? Oh no, I made him worse, I think. <laughs> He's kind of looking the wrong way too. I, I'm sorry, I'm not drawing like a very good picture here. All right, but again, we might have something like this, uh, the rock bottom or uh, like the very lowest place or the very worst place or the very middle or whatever. When we want to be precise, that's how we can use very, all right? But remember, these two words are connected together. It's the very something. If I'm reading a book, it's a similar idea. I might tell someone like, go back to the beginning of the story. Now, I might mean like the very beginning the very beginning or the very start of the book but maybe someone you know i just like i say go like drive like you're dr you're practicing driving a car for example so here's the car and this is like the, the start line here and you have to drive over here to the finish line and so the car starts moving like this and the car gets to over here and I say, no, 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 take the car back to the beginning, like the very beginning, all right? So the beginning might be like around here. Maybe they don't care. Maybe it, it doesn't matter. We don't need to be precise. But if I want to be precise, take it back to the, the very beginning, the very start, okay? Yes, kurumane. <laughs> Tom, throw in the, the kanji in there. All right, everybody getting this so far? Should be pretty easy. Alejandro said, then we can't use the very rock bottom because it'd be, uh, well, yes, I mean, uh, you could, like logically, you're, you're like, you're like really like, uh, like, like, uh. yes. So you, you mean, it's, it's basically the same thing. But I mean, rock bottom already sounds nice. You don't have to say the very rock bottom because that's, yeah, it's kind of the point. But you could logically, grammatically, you could, you could use that, all right? But you would sound less native if you did, all right? Let's see. And let's see, get back to the basics. So the same idea, so get back to basics in general or like the most basic or the very basic, all right? So the, the most basic, the very basic, anything like that. Everybody getting this so far, all right? Can we move on to number three? Let me know. Also, if this is making sense, click the like button so I understand that you understand me. If I see, I should see the little like, like number go up, 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 up. It's like do 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 Let's see, Keenold over there, hello from Chile. Nice to see you there, all right? So if everybody's getting this, we can move on to number three. Yep, we can move on. Teacher says, Tom. Tom, do you speak Japanese or are you just like stuck at the rock bottom? Yeah, you can just say that. So you can say, can we say stuck at the rock bottom or you can just say stuck at rock bottom. So rock bottom means like it's like that, that basic point. So we already know, like we don't, we don't need to say, like if I'm talking about a name of something or a specific place already like Chicago, so my hometown, Chicago, I don't need to say the Chicago. It's like everybody knows Chicago. If you have multiple Chicagos, then you would use the. So in the same way, rock bottom works uh, like the same way. So we just say rock, rock bottom. So it's already specific enough with like rock bottom as one thing. Can I say so hot today? You would say it's so hot today. So if we're talking up here, like it's, it's. So hot. 
So it's so hot today, it's so cold, I'm so tired. That's the same thing. So again, so is really just talking about like a degree of something. Like it's really, really hot, I'm so tired. So I'm not just tired, I'm like so tired. It's really tiring. Okay, I think everybody's getting it. Now we'll move on to number three. If anyone can guess what this is, I want you to put this down in, uh, down in the chat. What do you think number three is? You probably heard this before. So very quickly again, just to review, that exam was very hard. Yep, so the same thing. So very hard would be up here too. We're just talking about the degree. So one thing is hard, one thing is whoa, very hard, very long, very big, very strange, very interesting. Okay, so when we want to just say it's like really, it's the same thing. So you could say really. Same idea. Really hot, really strange, really fast, really slow, really cold, really cold, really amazing. But again, here, it's a little bit different. We're still talking about like an extreme degree or an advanced degree, but we're just trying to be precise. All right, so the very middle means from the middle, exactly. Again, remember my example here, if we have something, like if I just tell someone, if I tell my child, hey, put, put this marker in the middle of the floor, and like maybe, again, like it, maybe they put it here. Is that the middle? Yeah, it's, ki it's kind of the middle, kind of, not exactly. But where would, where would the middle be? Like I probably won't even measure this perfectly, but right here, like this, this is probably the very middle. The very middle. So usually the middle and the very middle, they mean the same thing. But if we're trying to really be precise, that's when we would do it. Can I say very be used as the same? Yes, the very same. That's where we're going. All right, now watch this. This is going to be a little bit interesting here. Let me erase this. Now, if we're talking about something, we want to emphasize it even more, we would use very in the same way. There's a really interesting way of using it. You might hear something like, this is, this is the very spot where I met you. This is the very spot where I met you. So we have the very, again, just like this, the very, but we're talking about a thing. This is the very spot where I met you. And again, we're trying to be precise. We're trying to emphasize something. So let me draw like a map, kind of. Let's say we have a, like an area. Let's say I meet you in Chicago. Okay, so let's say this is an, like an, an area of Chicago. I met you in Chicago. But right here, I met you, that very specific spot. This is the very spot where we met 10 years ago. So maybe 10 years ago, you and I were both in Chicago. Yes. So at this very moment, the same idea. Yes, right now. We're trying to be very specific. We want to make something sound important. Yes. My very first time here, yes. So again, like it, in, a, in a regular way, like the first time and the very first time, they mean the same thing. But you can see how a native might be trying to uh, make it sound more interesting. We want to give more uh, emphasis to that thing. All right. This is the very marker I got from like the prime minister of Japan. So this is not just any marker. This is the very marker I got from the Prime Minister of Japan. Okay? So this is the very spot where I met. So it's not over here or here or here, but like, wow, what a coincidence. Isn't this amazing? This is the very spot. Like, actually, this is the very spot where I was filming a video a few days ago. Amazing. This is the very spot. Okay? So we have, this is the very marker I got from, like, I got from the Japanese prime minister. So he gave me this marker. He said, Drew, please use this thick marker. All right. So the very marker, the very place, the very book, the very lesson, okay, was the marker in a gold box, asked John. Uh, no, it was not. It was in a blue box. What do you think about that? I couldn't really see the marker. He just gave me a blue box. I said, what is this? He said, oh, it's a blue box with a blue marker in it. 
What do you think about that? Excellent class, says uh, Cornelio. It's my pleasure. All right. So remember this. Like, if you watch a YouTube video and they say, don't use the word very, then you're going to miss a lot of things that natives use. Plus, natives actually do use the word very a lot. You could Google the word very and you'll see millions of examples. What is the teacher's name? All right. My name? Drew. Drew. Let's see, Josephina, hi from Minnesota. I love the way you teach. So again, you would say, I love the way you teach or I love the way you are teaching. You can say both of those. Thank you so much, my pleasure. All right, same exact place. Yes, Drew. All right, so again, it's the same idea. If we want to, we want to be precise about something or we want to make it sound more important, we want to emphasize it. So I could say, this is a marker. All right, let me, let me write these up here. Try to sound, sound a bit uh, more interesting with this. So if I don't care what this marker is, there's nothing special. This is a marker. All right, so we use a marker because there's nothing special. Like this is a marker, this is a marker, this is a marker. All right, but if we want to say something is special about this, like, oh, this is the marker I got from someone, okay? So this is the marker that I got from the president. This is the marker that I got from the president. This is the marker that I got from the president, okay? But if I want to say like, like, look at this, look how amazing this is. This is the very marker I got from the president. Isn't that amazing? This is the very marker I got from the president. Okay, so we're trying to be more precise, more specific, and really emphasize something showing that it's important, that you should listen to that. Like, this is the lesson that can transform your life. This is the very lesson that can transform your life. Amazing. All right, Tom, more teachers like Drew to, let's see, effectively teach us other languages. Yes, I don't know who else teaches. It would be nice maybe to build a network. I don't know who teaches German or French or whatever, uh, like the native way. But if they are out there, then let me know. Uh, I use pinch to mark on metal and mechanical works. Uh, it is like that. I use pinch to mark on metal. This is the very desk on which Einstein studied. Yes, so you would say like this is the very desk on which Einstein studied. So we, it's, we can end a sentence in a preposition, but it sounds a little bit odd. So we just say, on which he studied. This is, this, this is the very disc. So if we want, to, we want to sound amazing, like this is the very shirt uh, that I wore to, uh, I don't know, my high school reunion and everybody loved it or something like that. All right, so it's usually for something important. We want to say, hey, you should listen to this. This is valuable. This is interesting. We want to be specific, emphasize it. Everybody getting it. I teach pronunciation, says Lillian. Ah, all right. Yes, again, if you're trying to learn more about pronunciation, and Lillian, if you're teaching pronunciation, you should definitely be using Frederick. And you can learn more about that by clicking on the link in the description below this video. All right. Now let's go back and answer some questions. Make sure we got this already. Hound says, I have always been feeling confused about do you and are you and does he and is he please teach me. Uh, I think maybe I'll, maybe I'll save that for another lesson. We'll see. All right. Uh, Alejandro again, sometimes they pronounce the instead of the even when the word starts with a vocal sound. And Portuguese for foreigners, I see. Frederick is an amazing option. It is the option. It is the very thing. Frederick is the very thing you need to improve your pronunciation and listening and grammar and all that. It's the very thing, okay? Again, following this same thing, it is the, so Frederick is the very thing, the very thing that can help you. So people might list like a few different options for something. You could do this or that or this other thing, but this over here, this is the very thing you need. 
all right? Like if people are selling medicine or something like that. It is the very thing, the very thing, all right? I think you all can probably make up some more examples. Uh, there are lots of them. Again, we can pick pretty much any object, any, like anything. So this is the very book. This is the very, even something non-physical. This is the very idea. So maybe your friend is talking about something and I say, hey, that's the very idea I had two days ago. All right. Now, another word you can also use instead of very, I bet you can think, what else can we use instead of very for this situation? All right. Let me try, try the old black, old trusty black marker again. All right. So this is, can everyone read that? Yes, I think you can. So this is the, or let's just say like I'm talking with someone and I'm, I'm, I use the word that. So that, like I'm talking like someone else has an idea. So that is the very idea I had yesterday. So a friend of mine says, <laughs> a friend of mine says, uh, like we're talking about an idea and they, they say, yeah, I had a great idea for, I don't know, some like new invention or something. And I say, yeah, that's, that's the very idea I had yesterday. All right. That is the very idea I had yesterday. So I'm saying it's just that thing, that thing specifically. Oh, I just used the word. Did you catch it? Did you catch the word? Did you catch the word? Go ahead, put it down in the comments if you heard it. So what else can we use besides very in this situation? All right, let's see. The very place I met my wife was at a church on a mission. Yeah. So again, if we're trying to talk about something or uh, usually we are, we are like making a connection between two things. So in this case, it's like my friend's idea and my idea. So if a friend of mine met his wife in... I don't know, like a very specific restaurant in Toronto, Canada. So it's like pretty specific. So if he, he met his wife in Canada, you know, Canada is a big place. But if he met his wife at a restaurant, a specific place in Toronto, Canada, then I would say like, okay, like, wow, that's, that's the very place I met my wife. That's the very place I met my wife. Okay, so I could say that's the same place, but if I really want to sound like, wow, that's the very place I met my wife. That's the very place I met my wife. So that is the very idea I had yesterday. No one's got it? No one's got the answer? I'm going to take a drink. Let's see. I drew, I'm from Korea. Nice to see you there. I can't read the Hangul, unfortunately. Uh, let me know your name. If you have like a different handle or something, you want to put your name out there, feel free. So what else could we use in this sentence? So it's not precisely, I mean, we could use that. You could say that is uh, like, you would say like that is precisely the idea or exactly the idea, something like that. But instead of using the word very. And uh, angel or maybe angel from Cuba. Nobody's got it? All right, I'll just tell it to you. I know you guys like to, I want to give you a chance to discover things on your own, but if you want me to just tell you the answer. Just, okay? So we can use just in this way also. So I can say that is just the idea I had yesterday. All right? Actually, no, I'm gonna like, re like replace the answer. So that is just. So instead of using very, uh, pardon me, like, so it should be just the idea, not the just idea, which would be different. <laughs> so my, my apologies. But instead of using very, yes, we can use just in this way. So that is just uh, the idea I had yesterday. That is just the idea I had yesterday. Okay. That is just the idea I had yesterday. That is just the place I went to. That is just the uh, like the same idea, or that is just the uh, like just the the other thing. Typically, we will use just in this way. Though. Yes, and so remember that just also has various usages. But remember, I'm teaching you like a native speaker. So if I'm teaching my daughter, 
or, or I'm teaching both of my daughters, I'm going to give them an example for a specific situation. So I would say, uh, like, I can say that is the very idea I had, or that is just the idea I had. That is just the idea I had. Or that is exactly. That is precisely. That is exactly the idea. That is the very description of the word very. Yep, you got it. The great idea, very good idea. Could I use the, the great idea or, well, you would say a great idea because there, there are probably many great ideas. Can I use the same? Yeah, again, there are many different ways. You could say specifically, yes, you could say that. That is specifically, I mean, like, again, like it exactly sounds a little bit better, but we're trying to be very precise. It's not just being specific. It's like exact, like that same thing, exact. So exact is more like specific than specific. <laughs> All right, if the sentence starts with this instead of that, uh, how the nuance of the sentence will change. So the basic idea is like, like it's coming from the other person. So if I, and it's, it's, this is, it works the same way in Japanese. So if, like a, if, I'm, if I'm speaking with someone, here's one person and here's me over here. So this person says something and I'm like, ooh, that. Sore. Ah, sorry, what, ne? Like if I'm talking about like that, that specific idea, like yes, it is this when we, when we start talking about it, but it comes from someone else. So it came from the other person. I say, oh, like that, that is a great idea. So typically like another person says something and then the other person says that because they're talking about something that's kind of figuratively over there. So it doesn't really change the idea, but it's kind of giving credit to the other person and saying like, yeah, like it came from you. So that was your idea. Even if we have the same idea, I might say like, oh, that, that is a great idea. So you will hear that much more frequently than, oh, this is a good idea, all right? So if you say this is a good idea, you're, you're kind of taking credit from the other person. So you might find that in a movie, like let's say we have, uh, just like talking about the nuance of this, if we have a president of a company, so this is the president of a company up here, uh, and there are a whole bunch of guys over here and ladies or whatever, so a whole bunch of people who are giving uh, ideas. So the president says, we need a new idea to do something, uh, and this person has like, this person has a good idea over here. So the president could say, that is a good idea. So he's like giving credit to the other person. Or he could kind of take credit for himself by saying, like, yes, this is a good idea. All right, so it's a subtle difference. It doesn't really change the meaning a lot, but this is a deeper part of communication. So in, in the same way, like, again, like, like a president in Japan would be like, ah, kore wa yi na. Kore yi ne. You know, like I'm thinking about something like this is, uh, like, this makes a lot of sense. Okay? All right, the explanation makes sense. Yes, it's just the explanation you needed. It's the very explanation you needed. Okay, so you're like, I'm thinking like, here's an explanation, yeah, it's okay. This other explanation, yeah, that's okay. But ah, this one, that's just the explanation I needed. Okay, or that's the very explanation I needed. Okay, so again, like it's, you, you can think about it kind of logically like that. People aren't, they're probably not thinking about it consciously that way, but you will find this in, in uh, situations. Morning, Sue. Listening is a good habit, Hildar says. All right. Everybody getting this so far? Click the like button. Let me know. It looks like 38 likes for these, but there are more people than that watching the video. Just click on that. Sorry, Jura, but we all don't understand Japanese. Yes, uh, he does, though. So I was just giving him a, an example from Japanese. So it's, it's, it, work, it works the same way. So like if I'm, uh, if I'm Japanese or whatever and I'm using this, like we would talk like, uh, like, kore. I'm, I'm going to write even more, <laughs> like, it's going to look worse, but, like, if I'm talking about over, something over here, it's like, sore, kore, sore, or are, for, like, something even further away, like another person, like, ah, are, ina, like, ooh, that's a good idea over there, all right? So do I want, do I want to take credit? Am I just, because I, if I'm taking credit from, like, other people, um, like, like maybe I'm just saying like, oh, it's not like his idea, it's our idea, you know, like this, this is a good idea, okay? All right, let's see how we're doing up here. 
All right. Nils is back. Oh, that is what you mean. I don't know what that's referring to. Hit the like button, people. Yes, that's right. Social vibe over there. There we go. The likes are going up. Yes. Feed me the likes. I need the likes. That's the, that's the very thing I need to, to, to uh, stay alive over here. That's the very thing I need. All right. Let's see. All right. Uh, you are interesting teacher, are you? Again, you would say you are an interesting teacher. You are an interesting teacher. Because, again, if we're being like general, we're using an and the. Like we wouldn't, we wouldn't say like you are the interesting teacher, just as an example. We wouldn't say the interesting teacher uh, because like there might be other interesting teachers in that like other, if, uh, unless everyone else is like really not interesting, but that's probably not true. Uh, but so again, we might have like an interesting, so an interesting teacher, an interesting teacher. Or if we want to modify that, we want to change that a little bit, like uh, the most interesting or whatever, you can say that as well. Okay. All right. Let me make sure this is... Okay, everybody is coming. I made a mistake. So the same thing. I made a mistake. <laughs> so in, in Japanese, you don't have the like, uh, like, like, like we just say like ah oh, like uh, like or you know I made a mistake or something, but we're talking about counting mistakes in English, and so we would have like a mistake or uh, you know something I'm going to count a very a very thing. So yes, so Anomio says uh, very best sounds redundant, but you will hear it all the time. Okay, this is it's not just the best. This is the very best. This is the very fastest, you know, thing you could buy. So then it's like, whoa, I mean, it's, that sounds amazing. They made it even more, all right? Remember that language is often not precise like that. Like we might say something and it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't logically change, you know, there is, there's only the best. But the very best is like, wow, you know, that's like, it's like the best of the best kind of thing. So there's always uh, like some kind of example like that. And yes, like it's not really logical. It, it, it's, you know, it's redundant to say that, but people will use the language that way. Okay. The dream of Caesar. Hi, Drew. Nice to see you there. All right. Let's see. So yes, remember like the, the goal of me giving these lessons is to help you understand things the same way natives do. Now natives might not think about it and explain it the way I do, but this is the basic idea, all right? So they'll, they'll say like, wow, that's like, that's the very fastest car. That's the very best thing, even though you don't need to use that. But people will still communicate in that way because they're trying to show excitement. They're looking for a way to express that idea. And that's what we do when we communicate as a native. We're not trying to translate something from one language into another. We're looking for the best words for the situation. Okay, so always connect vocabulary with situations in English rather than trying to like take something from your native language and connect that to English. All right, that's why we don't, like um, for this video, I'm, I'm using a word, but really we have different situations and then we use a word for those situations, okay? All right, make sure chat is working. Uh, fortunately, I understand Japanese says, oh, and whatever, all right. All right, do you remember the very first time you started teaching? Uh, the very first time I started teaching. So good example, uh, do I remember the very first, well, I mean, I don't know, like teaching what? You know, I've been teaching lots of things. Like, I mean, I could have been teaching sports or teaching other people. I remember, like, I, actually a friend of mine in elementary school. So I was in maybe third grade or fourth grade. So I was probably, I don't know, maybe nine years old or something, 10 years old. And, and I, like, I taught her how to spell the word extraordinary. Because she was thinking, like, wow, extraordinary is, like, that's like a complicated word. I said, no, no, it's just extra and ordinary. And then like you put those together and she was like, ah, like she thought that was amazing and she remembered that idea. <laughs> so there's lots of times I've taught, but I mean, I can't really remember. I mean, I, I remember generally like the first time I was teaching English in a 
in like a classroom in Japan, but I don't, I don't even really remember like the first day or the very first lesson. There were a lot of them. They kind of blend together. I've had lots and lots, like thousands of hours. <laughs> All right, uh, so uh, Kiyoshi says, if we drop A or N, how odd it sounds to native speakers. All right, so again, here you would say, how odd would it sound? So we're talking about the potential, how odd would it sound to native speakers? Yes, it would sound very odd. And I, I, I always want to, want to make sure everybody understands this, but the most basic grammar like using determiners and like a and the, and we want to make sure uh, even the most basic things, if we're not using basic grammar correctly, uh, then of course you're not going to have like more interesting conversations because people will think, ah, you don't, you, you like can't communicate, you can't use even basic things correctly. So most people, like if you watch YouTube videos, they're always, it's the same idea about this lesson here. So people are like, don't use very. It's like, why not? You, why can't you use very? I would love to have a lesson with another teacher who is saying don't use very. <laughs> because I would say, I would say, just give them a smack and say, why would you tell people that? That's stupid advice. Because of course people use very. And a lot of people who are learning English, they still have trouble with basic things. So people are always trying to learn something more amazing, more impressive. I want to learn this awesome thing. But the really, the really impressive thing is actually just being able to communicate fluently. Okay? And you don't need to know a lot of uh, difficult words to do that. All right, hopefully everybody's getting this. Like this is, this is the very lesson I have been teaching for years. You want to become fluent. You want to understand the language like a native so you can communicate like a native. You don't need to know a lot of vocabulary to do that. And you certainly don't need a lot of difficult vocabulary. But you definitely should be mastering the basics. So you should be learning things like an and the and really understanding what they mean. So even something simple like very, so by listening to this lesson, you will now feel much more confident because you're learning about the word very, and now you can apply it in many different ways. So you understand how it works like a native, and you're not like nervous about using the word. You should be excited about using every word, okay? All right, Drew was born and raised in Chicago. Yes, that is correct. <clears throat> All right, I hit the button, says Nils. Yes, click it often. And Emil says, the goat. Yes, yeah, like, meh, the goat. There you go. Oh, Wakarimashita says, Tomu-sama, yoroshiku onegaishimasu. All right, here we go. So, so simple says, all right, let's, let's see. And uh, an angel, let me know if that's angel or angel. I love the, like, the angel. You are the best teacher in the world. You guys are too kind over here. This lesson is the very one I was looking for. Very good, Eunice. You got it. All right, that's the least I can do. You know, that's an interesting expression, the least I can do. You know, the least you can do is not doing anything. <laughs> you could just not click the like button. So when someone says like, you know, that was the least I can do. Really, the least you could do is, is absolutely nothing, just not even doing anything. <laughs> but thank you for clicking the like button. All right, Sounding Better says, Aran, I don't know if you're talking about the audio quality or my voice or whatever, the very least you can do, let's see. Yes, so you can say that as well. Leash says, hi, everyone. Where are you from, Drew? I am from Chicago. Uh, are, you, are you a native speaker? Are you, uh, where, are you, where are you from, Lillian? Let me know. You can use very and other similar words as well. Yes. So what I'm trying to do in this video is we focus on one word, which I don't, I don't really want to take like a word and try to give you every definition of it or every use. So there's only a few of them, and they're related. So this is much easier uh, and like... And it's, it's easier if you understand, like, if, if I take something small like this, like, I would not take, I don't know, like, wood or some, some other, like, complicated word that has lots of different uses and sometimes they're not connected. But if you look at these all together, you can see, like, you can understand the connection between them, okay? So it's important, like, to, to look at things, but as a situation. So this is one situation, this is another situation, this is another situation. They're related, but they're still uh, like a specific thing. All right, everybody getting that. Okay, let's see. Uh, Kelly Mann recently bought your Fluent for Life. It was no cheap, but many videos you recommend daily. Or how many videos you recommend daily? Yes, Kelly, uh, welcome to the program. Uh, I recommend one daily, that's it. <laughs> 
So I know people want to go through content much faster, but the goal of the program is to help you develop fluency step by step over time. So if I could give you like a lesson like this about like very or whatever, but if we could focus on that for two or three days, then you would really feel confident about using it. You would become fluent in that and then you could move on to something else. So what we do is you focus on a particular lesson set for the whole month. You begin with the grammar focus video, uh, depending on the lesson set, each lesson set is a little bit different. Uh, but like if we pick a more recent set like volunteering, uh, so you would start with the grammar focus video and on the first day you would just watch the video. On the second day, you would just listen to the video. On the third day, you would just read the transcript. And each time you're going to learn a little bit more, you're going to retain a little bit more. This is a, a basic form of naturally varied review. But then, as you go through the, the rest of the lessons in that set, you're going to hear those things again. Uh, you're going to hear them from different people in different ways. And then we're going to, again, uh, show you how everything works in the conversation. So don't try to watch a, a bunch of videos at one time. Uh, people can do that. We don't stop you from doing that. But the point of the program is to really develop fluency. And that's why the program really walks you through these things step by step. So even this, like this lesson, even if you think it's a good lesson, you might forget some of it tomorrow. So that's why we have you come back and review things again in different ways. And you hear not just me speaking, but other people speaking. Okay, Lillian says your class is awesome. And you're from uh, Brazil, or teaching, uh, teaching in Brazil. Yeah, that's my pleasure. All right. So everyone, everyone, any, if like you're thinking about joining the program, the, the typical way learners think is that I need to learn more vocabulary. Give me more information, more information. But today you notice we're just focusing on one word, one word. Okay. And I, I'm doing that just so I can show you like, look how, how useful one word can be when you think about it like a native speaker. So a native, it's like, what does the word very mean? They're going to think, well, when can I use that? Well, I could use it like this. I could use it like this. I could use it like this. Okay? So very simple, uh, but helping you understand these things like a native speaker. That's the whole point. But remember that even if a lesson is good, you still need to review that lesson. So people forget things. I could teach you some Japanese right now very quickly, and like you would still be like, ah, uh, Okay, that's great, but maybe tomorrow I will forget the lesson. But if you could watch a different video or you could have a different audio or a different lesson in each day, it would help you uh, really like cement that stuff into your, into your mind, okay? But that's how you get fluent. So it's not just about learning the vocabulary. Take your time, follow the steps. There's a daily schedule in the program and you can just follow that. All right, and let's see. Elena says, Konnichiwa, Drew. I'm here enjoying your lesson. Glad to hear it. Welcome. Suzette says, hi, teacher. Please, could you help me about verb ought? Yes, like you ought to get Frederick. There you go. <laughs> ought is like you should, you know. But again, I'm, uh, rather than take one word like ought and then try to teach a bunch of meanings of it, I can give you just one situation. And you should be learning them by the situation like that. So even in our grammar focus, like we want to take something and we'll, we'll cover something like a particular situation and then look at some different situations where you might use something. But the point is to, it's much easier to connect that in your mind if you've got, um, rather than like a translation or a definition of the word, we want to think about when you would use something, okay? So that way, when you're in that situation, you will naturally use the vocabulary. Okay. And uh, let's see. Tomoko says, do you have very good transport systems in Chicago like Japan? Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, we have buses and uh, like a train. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's probably not like... It's probably less clean than Japan, <laughs> but we do have buses and trains. I mean, they're, you know, but yeah, we do. Uh, let's see, Dalio says, thanks for helping. It is very important to know details about lessons. Yeah. Your class is awesome again, Lillian. Thank you very much. All right, let's see, where are my words go? What does that mean? All right, can I say thank you so very much? Help me please. Yes, Lucien, uh, is that Lucane, Lucane? Uh, but yes, you can say that. So this is just like, I can say thanks, I can say thank you, 
I can thank, I can say thank you very much. I can say thank you so very much. I can say thank you so very much. I really appreciate it. Okay? It's just how much appreciation, how much, how much thanks do you want to want to appreciate or show to that other person? Chicago's transport system is as good as Japan will. Okay? Let's see. And enemy says, I can't attend right now. I'm very busy. It's okay. You can just go ahead and watch uh, the replay later. Japanese too. I like this idea. All right. Let's see. Context always. All right. And it looks like we got to the end of the comments. All right. Fantastic. And what time is it? Yes. And we're a little bit early today. Fantastic. Now, uh, as I said, I will hang around. So this is a great phrasal verb for you. So I will hang around, hang around. So you can imagine me like a bunch of bananas or something. I'm just, just hanging over here. Uh, if people have any questions, I will ask uh, or I will answer those. Uh, and then I can rest my voice for the rest of the day. Uh, let's see. Would you teach us some slang? Again, you can, if you want to count that, we would say like slang expressions. Uh, but we, we, slang by itself is uncountable. You could say slang words or say, slang phrases, uh, but we don't, we don't count slang by itself. All right. Let's see here. Jose says, thank you for all the great lessons during all this years. You would say during all these years because we're talking about more than one, but it's my pleasure. And don't feel bad if I, if I like, correct your English or whatever. That's part of the reason people are here. <clears throat> and it's also good. I know people read each other's comments, so this is a way for them to correct themselves as well by looking at, like, the mistakes other people make. So please comment. Don't, don't feel bad about, uh, like, making mistakes about anything like that. That's good. So hang around is like hang out. Yes, well, I mean, hang, hang around is typically, like, like if I'm here but I'm leaving soon, I will stay for a little bit. In that case, I'm using hang around, all right? And you could say like hang out, but like hang out can also be used for, if I'm meeting some people, I say, hey, let's go to the park and, and hang out at, at the park for a while. Just relax at the park, spend time together at the park. But if I'm here and I'm finishing and soon I will leave, then like, okay, I will, or I could hang around, I will hang out for a bit, but hang around is typically like I'm still kind of here, but then I will be gone. So you would hear probably more natives uh, say hang around for a bit rather than hang out. So hang out implies like a little bit longer. Uh, we're going to spend some more time rather than just a little bit. Okay. But I try to be precise. Uh, when I'm speaking, so I will hang, like hang around for a bit, like for a few minutes or something like that, if people have questions. All right. So I wanted to keep this video uh, pretty short, pretty specific. How are we doing? Yeah, look at that. Under an hour. Amazing. Under an hour. All right. Uh, see if I missed anything else. Does everybody get this? After hanging around, you head out. Does that make sense? Yes, that's correct. So if I'm leaving, I can leave or I can head out. Like if I have like the head of something like a snake moving out that way. So I'm heading out. So I'm leaving. Uh, I will head out for the day and go do something or I will head out of the room. So head out. I'm going out. All right. Elena says, which phrases can I say when I'm heading? I'm handing something to someone besides... Uh, here you go. I would love to know synonyms. Thank you. Oh, okay. Uh, you can just say, here you are. You can say, this is for you. <laughs> really, that, like, the answer to your question depends on the exact situation. Um, like, if you're, if you're giving a present to someone rather than giving a homework assignment back to a teacher. So, like, a homework assignment maybe would say, like, here's the work. Like, I'm finished. Here you go. Here you are. But remember, you don't need to think of lots of complicated ways to, to say things. It's just what's the natural thing. Here you are. Here you go. And you can use that really for any situation. But in, a, in like, a, like a present for someone, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't just say like here you are, you know, if it's an important president, a present. Uh, so I might say like uh, this is for you or this is just for you, this is especially for you, like I made this for you or I got this for you, something like that. So it just, it just depends. 
Yeah, so here you go and here you are, it's the same thing. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> Here you go. It's like I'm talking. It's like there, there you are. Like here you are. Look at that. Here you are. All right. And these are things like if you think about it logically, you get confused because you're saying that the person is here. It's like, but I'm saying like here. Like look, this thing here. Here you are. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm leaving soon. Says uh, and no. Nemo. I know Nemo. Yeah, you keep saying you're leaving. <laughs> I thought you were leaving already. All right. Uh, Melissa says, thanks for, you would say thanks for the assistance because you're talking about a specific thing someone did. So thanks for the or thanks for the assistance. Thanks for the assistance. All right. Uh, and let's see. Aish says, thanks so much for the programming. Thanks so much for the pro the programming. Now this is a little bit tricky. If you say thanks so much for programming me, it's like I'm like programming your mind like a computer or something. So you can see why simple things like this, they change the meaning of a sentence. So thanks for the programming, like thanks for the class or thanks for the show or whatever. So thanks for the thing. All right, if you dropped, if you dropped, how would it sound? If you dropped what does that mean? If you dropped, how would it sound? If you dropped what? All right, both seams, same, here you go, yeah. So I found a fact, people who live in a country where English is not, so you, would, you wouldn't say isn't not, you just use is not or isn't, either one of those is fine, the main language, but they can still speak very impressive English. That's amazing. Yes, so again, like one of the, when I tell people that they don't need to live in an English-speaking country to speak fluently, it's because you don't need to live in an English-speaking country to speak fluently. <laughs> it sounds like an interesting and weird idea because most people think that they need to go to the United States or the UK or wherever uh, and, and have an actual conversation to improve. But uh, this video right here, like all of my videos, it proves that if you learn the right way, then that's what actually improves your fluency. So it's not you repeating, like imagine if we had two lessons. The first lesson is me just saying the word very over and over again. So I say the word very, so very, 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 very. Uh, so I repeat something like very, 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 and what do you think about that? Very, 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 very. It doesn't actually help you. Even if you repeat after me, that's not really helping you understand the word. But like this, now you're getting a couple of different uses for different situations and you understand the word better. Okay? Very, 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 very. Very, 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 very. Okay. Uh, let's see. So phrasal verbs are quite simple but tricky at the same time. Yes, uh, it depends, uh, but if you learn them the right way, they're quite easy. Tomoko says, what is the difference between long time ago and long time before? I think we covered this uh, before, but I'll just very quickly about this. This is a pretty simple, quick thing I can cover. So if we have now, and I forget which video this was in, I really should like cut my videos up. Uh, into different little clips for these. I, I'm sure I will do that in the future. So here's now. So if we're talking about something like in the past, this is five years ago. So from now into the past. That's when we're talking about five years ago. It means like from now into the past. But from a different time in the past, then we would use the word before if we're talking about time like this. So if I say, if, we're, if, I'm, if I'm talking now, I say five years ago, I lived in uh, China. I lived in China five years ago. But three years before that, so this is ago, and now we're talking about before. So we use before for different times other than now. So this is three years, this is five years. So five years ago and three years before that. Okay. Let me know if that makes sense. All right, I just again, thank you for the lesson. Impressive, I must say, I have a kind of grammar question. Can I ask you, do we need an article in the sentence? I just landed a job as a contractor. Yes, because you, we don't, like there are lots of contractor jobs. So if you're talking about one, there, there, if there are more than one, but if you're talking with your friend and 
and like they know what you're doing or there's only one position, then you can say, I got the contractor job. I got the contractor job. Yay, like I got this one. Like I didn't get that one, but I got this one. Okay, so if you're talking about something specific, that's when we use that. All right, and Kelly again says, what about your best friend, Richard Budger? I don't know who that is. You mean Richard Badger? Richard Badger, you gotta spell the name correctly now. Let's see, LA says, can you explain the use of effect and effect? I don't know how to use those properly. You can just Google, like Google differences like this. this is, these are just like homonyms or whatever. So one is like, like to affect something means to change it. And then we're talking, and then again, like ra that, rather than me trying to like write these down, it's, it's pretty easy to get uh, just if you search for like effect versus effect. So, but one is like an action, like we're, we're affecting something, like I'm trying to affect you with an A, I'm trying to affect uh, change in you. But the effect with an E is like a result of something happening. All right, when to use two? Now I'm not covering that. <laughs> because there are too many, too many examples. It, like you would, it's, it's, it'd be crazy to cover like all the different, different things about two. Uh, but those are the like the kinds of things people are asking for like that. This is what we do in Fluent for Life. So you can search the index. Like I want to know how to use two like a native, and you'll get different examples uh, that will show you step by step how to do that. Uh, if I'm very angry, can uh, can be said as I'm pissed off? Yes, that's correct. Yep, some shorts would be good to watch. Yes, I need someone to edit those. Who wants to edit edit some videos? You can do that. Someone make some like short clips. I mean, she want to wear a red dress and she wears a red dress. Well, you'd say she wants to wear a red dress if you're talking about like someone in the future <clears throat> or somebody now like wanting to do something. You can say that. All right, when should I use shall and should? Yes, that's another thing like we're not going to cover. That's a whole, like a, those are whole video topics that we would cover about those things. But again, these are the kinds of things that we cover in Fluent for Life. If anyone has still uh, not joined the program and they're thinking about joining it or you've not tried Frederick as well, let me know. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions about that. But it looks like, well, Ida says, I'm confusing. You would say, I'm confused. I'm confused. Uh, about vague words like somehow, somewhat, how can I use them? Uh, again, like it's if you're if you're just being non-specific about something, that's when that's when you would use something like that. Like I'm I'm a little bit I'm a little bit unsure. So if you're like you're unsure, again, people are not they're not always precise or specific with their language, and they want to communicate like like I don't know at all. Most people don't say, I, like, I don't know something at all because it, they don't want to look like they, are, they don't know something. Uh, but they will say, uh, like, I don't, like I, I don't really understand that. <laughs> so I'm, I, like, I am somewhat or a little bit or slightly confused about something like that. All right. So again, less. he took painkillers for his headache, but then he got side effects. Yeah, same kind of thing. I'm really affected for your bad behavior. Yeah, grammatically, you, if you want to talk about bad, you're like affecting someone else, like someone else's bad behavior is affecting me, like that. You could say that. All right. But it looks like we got through all those. Um, I can give you like a few last examples uh, that I wrote down but did not uh, teach. But you can think, just to think about how uh, how useful this word is, especially this third usage here. Like this is the very hand that like wrote something, or this is the very weapon that did something, or this is the very time, the very place, the very day, the very whatever. Okay. So again, if we want to be precise and we want to show people, wow, here's something amazing or, uh, you know, like very valuable, or we just want to show that it's awesome. That's when we would use that. All right. So it looks like we got no questions left. Fantastic. Uh, and that's all for me. Great. All right. Well, if you have any questions, uh, you can feel free to send us an email. You're the GOAT, greatest of all time. Yes, I'm glad. So if you are, like, when you use that, like, if you are the GOAT, then that's a typical expression. People would know you are the GOAT. But if you said you are a GOAT, that would just be insulting. <laughs> so you say, Drew, you are a GOAT. Now, this is, again, why we want to be precise with our language. So you said it uh, uh, perfectly. All right. Again, like if you're if you're if you're if you're trying to think about what is like a specific 
uh, like use for something like affected or what? Like just look, just Google that. Google affected versus or like effect versus effect. You'll find lots of examples with lots of examples, and it can tell you uh, a lot more information about like grammatical, like linguistic stuff if you want to know those specific terms. Okay. Wow, that made sense. Glad to hear it. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Zer is a habit if we use we got. Uh, I mean, it, it's incorrect English, but people will use that very casually. Yeah, like we got, you know, we got a, we got a present. I mean, like we, yeah, I mean, you, you can, you can, it depends on how we, how we use that, actually. So you can use it correctly and say, like, we got, like, my family got some money or something. Like, we got, we got some money. So you can use it correctly there, but you might hear, like, like, we gotta, we gotta go or something. Like, that, and then it's like using a slightly, a little bit of slang when people use that in a conversational way. Uh, but it depends on the situation. Uh, I have a lar marvelous morning again. Ha, who's the goat is a controversy in America. So you would say America. Uh, thank you for the class and answering my question. So you wouldn't say answer to, you would just say answering my question. Hello from the Philippines. Everything is on YouTube. Let's see. Oh, everything is on YouTube? Why is your English not perfect? That's interesting. Everybody, everybody here, like if you're watching lots of videos on YouTube, you should already be fluent. Or maybe everybody is already. And I'm wasting my time. <laughs> Let me know. Uh, because my, like, my, I, like I started teaching because I wanted to get fluent in Japanese. Uh, and like once I figured out how to learn, uh, I wanted to share that with other people. So it depends. Like some people, maybe they just enjoy I don't know, like watching a lot of uh, just a lot of content on YouTube. But it's 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 usually is it's always interesting when I see people who are just continuing to watch more YouTube videos. But there are lots of mistakes in their comments uh, or their you know, like I, I'm not trying to I, I don't spend my time watching a lot of YouTube videos about learning Japanese. Um, not not that it's a bad thing, but if, if people were getting fluent with that, um, then like, I don't know, maybe some people just like watching videos, I guess, I don't know. Uh, but for me, uh, I want to be like, I, I'm like, the goal is not to like spend my time just like learning. I want to get out and use it, you know, do something with it and, and figure out how I can learn and uh, get uh, like get fluent faster and not have to just sit and like study a lot. Uh, let's edit some clips that uh, then Drew, uh, teacher can, that we can see some shorts. Yes, go ahead. Anybody does that, just send those to me. Our unit says, I'm confused. It's confusing. In these cases, verb ed and verb ing. Uh, yes, you would say, like, I'm confused about something. But you would just say, like, something is confusing. That's it. So either, either the thing is confusing or I am confused. But, like, I'm not confusing unless I'm confusing someone else. <laughs> All right? Maybe I should, I should do, like, ed versus ing in, like, a, a lesson about that. All right. But hopefully that makes that makes sense. All right. Nope, you're not wasting your time. <laughs> All right, my last question for today. Can I say I have to face the music for your bad behavior? Uh, yes, like if, if you have to face the music for someone else, yeah. But I mean, in that, typically the, like, facing the music is like, is usually for the person who did the bad thing. Because, like, you created a problem for yourself, and now you have to deal with something. But if, like, if someone just, like, puts a gun to my head and says, give me your money, I'm not, like, facing the music. It's just, like, I didn't create that problem. Someone just is trying to take my money. So if someone else creates a problem for you, uh, like, you, you would say more, like, I'm, like, I, I have to deal with your, like, your problem, or, like, now I have to, like, take out your trash or something like that if you want to be a little bit more like I don't know interesting and poetic with the language but yeah I mean it, it, typically it's for something doing yourself uh, so Joe says I've heard people say I'll tell you for the very first time why they use very in the sentence go back and watch the video <laughs> where I explained that already all right you need to be selective sadly time isn't unlimited indeed that's true 
Owen says, as a non-native speaker, it can indeed be challenging to distinguish certain language usages and determine their level of politeness. Yes. Again, that's why we want to learn things the same way natives do, so we can understand, oh, in this situation, at this level of politeness, people say this, or something like that. So I can say hello in different ways depending on who I'm speaking with. And that's why, like, we don't learn just greeting. It's like greeting for what? To whom? When are we talking about that? That's why we want to connect words with situations rather than try to understand like a word and then use it everywhere. Melissa says, your content is very helpful and has a high quality. Thank you for that. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Yes, I definitely don't want to make some low quality content. I know I try to like, uh, my videos are not well edited or anything. I, I just like to answer questions from people. This is easy for me to do also, uh, but I'm glad it's helpful. Now I have to face the music. Uh, we. I'll never forget it. Now I have to face the music. Yes, so if you create a problem for yourself, then you have to face the music. But if you are, like, if your child does something and then you as a parent have to deal with that problem, like, that you're not really facing the music, it's just someone else, it's someone else's music <laughs> that they created. All right, so what's up? Enomio, uh, Eno Nemo is still here. I thought you were leaving. What are you doing here still? Quite mesmerizing lesson. Yes. Isn't that interesting? A mesmerizing lesson. All right. This is the last one. This is my very last question. Very good. <laughs> uh, this is my very last comment. Very good. Very good. The lesson was great. Thank you very much. How can I improve my spelling? Uh, says Mohammed. Get Frederick. Click on the link in the description below this video and you can get that. It'll improve your spelling, listening, all that. Durant says, does mastering subject and... Predicate will make me fluent. All right, again, you'd say like, will this and this do something? So will mastering like subject and whatever make me fluent? Again, you get fluent in particular words and phrases. So today the goal really is like, just to help you understand this, okay? So I want to get you fluent in the word very. And even this lesson by itself, even though it's helpful, hopefully you learn something from it, uh, you should be reviewing these things again and again. And that's why like watching on YouTube, even with a good lesson is, is often not enough. So you still need to go back and get more review uh, from other situations or other people or at different speeds, that kind of thing, all right? So you get fluent when you understand something really well, and then you can use that fluently and confidently in your conversations. So when you understand something well, you feel confident about using it. Uh, most people don't communicate or they don't speak or they don't want to be in conversations because they're worried about saying the wrong thing. And they're worried about saying the wrong thing because like, they're not fluent in the vocabulary, okay? So it's not about repeating information again and again, you have to understand that. Haran is totally confused. I don't know what you're confused about. Let me know. How much does your course cost? How much time does it take? So you can click on the link in the description below this video to learn more about the program. Uh, but again, like it's about 15 minutes a day at least. I mean, if you have 15 minutes a day, everybody should have 15 minutes a day while you're getting ready in the morning or riding in the car or whatever. You should have some time. Uh, to improve, but it will be better than like listening to lots of random content, um, which is it's going to be much uh, much slower to improve your fluency. So if you can focus, get lessons that teach you like a native speaker. So learning English as a first language rather than learning English as a second language, that will get you fluent much faster uh, than just trying to take vocabulary and repeat it again and again. But to learn more about Frederick or Fluent for Life, you can click on the links in the description below this video. All right. I was making examples in real time. Ah, glad to hear. All right. Well, it looks like that's it. Uh, as a non-native speaker, I tend to mince. Yes, you would say mince. So mince the words in my mind before I speak. Yes. Again, like often people are doing that because they're not understanding the vocabulary like a native. And hopefully this, even just this one lesson has helped you understand that. You can tell me anonymous. Oh, is that what that is? You can, oh, you mean I can call you anonymous. I can call you anonymous, like that's your name. Yeah, I'll use whatever your, whatever your, uh, I just like, if I'm looking at it, I'm trying to look and the letters are very tiny on my phone. <laughs> so I'm trying to read it quickly. Uh, but that looks like the, uh, like the V for Vendetta face. 
All right, well, that's it for me. Uh, I think we got to everyone, and I'm glad to see the chat is working on the phone, but have a fantastic day. Again, if you would like to get fluent, if you enjoy just watching lots of YouTube content and that's getting you fluent, fantastic. But if it's not, then click on the links in the description below, and I'll actually get you fluent. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.